So let's start. Let's get, let's get going. Father, pierce their hearts with your precious word. Let the glory of God fall upon this house in your presence. And may your power follow. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you're out there and you just say, what is the presence of God and the power of God? The presence of God is revelation of his word. That's when you know you feel him right there. It's, you're not feeling power. You're feeling his, his, under, his revelation. And then the power of God is when he just, phew, forget about it. So, all right, here we're going to start with this. The voice of God versus the voice of man. Oh, church, mm, ah, you have no idea how many Christians can really... The enemy can pervert right there. And if the enemy can pervert that in leaders, the leaders will teach the other monkeys not to climb the pole. Come on, you understand what I'm saying? So the voice of God told me, and God said, most of the time, the only thing God's going to ever tell you is what's written in this book. That's it. He's going to talk to you about this book, and from there is going to come understanding. So if you can't usually back it up with Scripture, you probably shouldn't say God said Amen. Somewhere in the Bible, he said it to someone else. And if God is telling you something, you're like, well, what is he saying? I don't understand. Just start looking in the scriptures. Go to Google, man. Start punching in what you think God's telling you. And if a scripture pops up, search it, research it, read it, and watch what happens. It's just powerful how you mix God with the word of God. Otherwise, it's not so much what God says, it's what you're saying. And if you're saying something and you're actually listening to you, then there's the opportunity for the enemy to steer you the opposite direction. So the fear, fear will literally cause you to believe your own lie and run. Oh, mm. you know, this must be, just be real to me or other people will be going, mm, got it, yeah. But fear, fear will, it, it, you'll believe your own lie. You'll believe it so much that you'll literally believe that that's what you're supposed to do. But yet nowhere in this word does it line up. And God's like, I'm not changing my word to fit your you're a personality. So you say, what does that mean? The fear will come. Because when fear comes upon man, instead of standing, we try to hear God for a way out. And we try to get away from it. What we need to understand and what is, is so powerful is God never said run. Anywhere in the Bible, anywhere from the Old Testament it, to the, all the way through the New Testament, nowhere did God ever say run. He always says stand. Paul the Apostle, stand. Jesus says stand. Every, everything God says is to stand. So why do we run? Because we hear a God that is not God. And we have to understand that because the fire of God is the only thing that helps you hear the voice of God. Amen? The fire of God is the Holy Spirit in motion through you. And the Holy Spirit doesn't lie. And the Holy Spirit doesn't confuse you. And the Holy Spirit will cause you to do things that you not only are afraid of, that you don't want to do, but to have you trust in God in the midst of what he's asking you to do. So, and it's not exciting. Trust me, God, church, it's not exciting. So I put a slide up here because I really wanted to open up with something and with a thought that can help us to stick. Our desire is to avoid the pain or rejection and confrontation and the like. That's our desires, and God's desire is to get us through them. Our desire is to avoid them. Come on, did you hear that? God's desire is to get us through them. We live a lifetime loving God, but never truly experience Him. Why is that? Because we, we never stand. We're too busy running. If we don't like something, we run. If things get hard, we run. If things get tiring, we quit. The more you can stand in a position for years and be overlooked and be feeling like nothing's going right in your life, but yet your roots are growing deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And one of these days, someone's going to walk into you going, man, you didn't even move. No, because my roots are deep. See, I didn't get up and move every time I felt like it. And they will look at you and go, not only are you a pillar in the church, you're actually a pillar in my life now too. But these, we never experienced this God because the Christians of today hear a man in their head and call him God. So we have to try and really get a hold of that. And I'm going to try and help you understand that the fire, this, the whole message is on the fire of God. It won't take long to get through this, but the fire of God is the only thing that can direct your path. It's the only thing, think about it. it, it led Israel through the desert. You know, I mean, God is just so magnificent. Jesus is just so powerful. And I'm going to start with Acts chapter 5, verse 12. The bottom half of what I wanted to preach that God said, no, do it next week. So I'm just going to stay to the top half, and it's all about 
this fire causes us to stand. And I pray, and I don't even have to pray. I don't even have to pray. I know that I know that I know that this word will bless you if you just hear it today. So hold on, grab attention to this word, and don't let anything distract you. Verse 12, starting with Acts chapter 5, starting with verse 12, it says, The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Now, that's pretty wild. There were people that were... That were um, uh, they, they heard them preaching in the colonnade like they would do outdoor preaching, but they wouldn't join them. Not all of them would join them. Why is that? This refers to the people who were intrigued with the word of God, the, the people that respected the Christian message, but they were afraid to join probably because of the death of Ananias and Sapphira for lying. What is that trying to say to us today? Well, they're not ready to dive all in yet. These are people that are just on the outskirts going, ooh, I'm a little shaky on this. I don't know what to do. I'm scared to dive into God. I'm scared to give Jesus all of me. I'm scared to put all my trust in because I don't know what he's going to do to me. I don't know. I saw Ananias and Sapphira drop dead, but I want to give, I want to, I want to be a Christian. I want to jump in. I want to trust this Jesus. I want to believe him, but I just don't know what he's going to do to me. So how do we, as Christians that have already dived in, how do we help these people get from the outskirts to the inner circle? Simple. Preach and live the truth. That's it. Preach and live the truth. The reason Ananias and Sapphira dropped dead is because not only did they hear the truth, not only did they say they believed in the truth, but then they denied the truth and became their own God. They heard the voice of man in their own head. And felt it necessary to give, but yet to do what they wanted to do and lie so they can get a position of standards. Now, there's many other, other understandings of that, but all I want you to understand is people watch from a distance. They're hearing the message, but until they see it on us and through us, they're going to stay outside because they're afraid. Keep, let me keep going. 14, it says, Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. So there were people that are on the outskirts, but then there were those that were drawn in. What does that mean? The fire, this fire that had hit them in the book of Acts in chapter 2, in the book of Acts chapter 4, and probably somewhere all in between there, however long it took to get from 4 to 5. But nevertheless, more of them were added. This fire continues to bring a passion to the truth. Oh, this is what's going to keep your life on track. It's a passion for truth. It's not a passion for you to escape rejection. It's not a passion for you to escape pain. It's a passion for truth. Because what sets you free? Truth. So the voice in your head that is man telling you to run, telling you to, to jump ship, telling you to do something a different way is the voice of man and your roots will never grow. Therefore, your trust will never grow. Therefore, you will be blown over by the wind. As Pat said earlier when he was talking, it's not on the solid foundation. It's on sinking sand. So we have to say this. So those who were just attracted Let's look at this because it so patternizes in our world today. But those who were just attracted by the miracles and the signs and wonders were intrigued, but only those who were genuinely and fully committed to growing in the Christian faith stepped in. So there are many people that are watching from the outside and they will step in and they will watch the show because it's intriguing. Supernatural is intriguing. But until you step in and sell out, you will only be watching a show. There's a whole huge difference here. The glory of God is for you only when you step in, not on the outside. God will use everything to draw you in, and he give, he's a gentleman. He's a gentleman. Every day you leave, he'll place this before you and say, you can have it today. And he watches you walk up to it. He watches you do this. He watches your phone go off on your, on your iWatch, and he watches you... Oh, yeah, I'll get to that in a minute. He watches all this. And he's like, just, just dive in. Just, just dive in. I'm so, proud of, uh, I'm so proud of Thomas. I've known Thomas since he was 16 years old. He's 40-something now, but uh, he ages, I don't. But he's, <laughs> he was Ubering the other day. And um, two ladies got in the car, and they were, they were coming. They were young, and they were going to be, I guess they were going to an internship at one of the Baptist colleges or something like that. And, and uh they were talking to him, they were asking him some things and asking him advice, and, and he said, I can only give you one, one piece of advice that I know of. This is the only, see, he only gave him advice that he guaranteed and he knew. He said, stay in the word. Read the word. Yearn for the word. That's what he told him. 
See, you don't even know what you did there, Thomas, but you probably rocked their world, and in 20 years, they'll remember. They won't remember the, the guy's name, but they'll remember the Uber drive that told them to stay in the word of God because that's what distinguishes the voice of man and the voice of God. Because when you're in the word, the things that you hear go, hey, don't match up with the word. Bye-bye. Come on. So keep, let's, let's keep moving forward here. So these people who are truly committed are the ones that stepped in, and those were the ones that their numbers grew. They said, that's it, I'm all in, let's just do this. So the fire builds the kingdom. That's what God's fire does. It, builds, it not only strengthens man, but it builds the kingdom. Here's a slide for you. We should never take, oh, come on church, especially those of you that are just really deep into this Christian walk, we should never take an, on the anxiety of bringing the non-believer to Jesus. Just don't do it. I think I said something like this last week. I'm just repeating it again. Don't take on the anxiety of bringing the non-believer to Jesus. Our, Our burdens should be recognized as passion for delivering the depth of revelation of who Jesus is. That's where our burden should be. It should be in our, and it's not, because Jesus says the yoke is easy, the burden's light. Once you have a passion for Jesus, living that passion out is not hard on you. It's, it's simple. It's what you want to do. It's what, it's what comes natural. Don't take a burden in convincing because then you, instead of becoming a distributor of God's revelation to the people, you become a salesman for the enemy. Wait a minute, because, what do you, because you have placed God in, in yourself. You say, I am God. I, I need to get that. I look at people today and I'm like, if I look at people, I, I, I am only the rock. That's all I do. I'm David. I just throw the rock. The Holy Spirit puts the rock in the the Goliath's head. I just deliver the message. I I don't have to, I'm not the answer for all of you. And if anybody sits there and goes, well, we don't like him anymore, I can't look at it and go, well, what are you doing? Why are you leaving? Why are you quitting? Why? I'm not your answer. Maybe God's got a better answer for you. Maybe you need to drag through the mud some more or maybe you're gonna find light somewhere else. I, I don't know the answer, but so many times ministers feel I'm responsible for you. We're not responsible for the people. We're responsible for having passion of Jesus for the people. Amen? See, the difference is huge. Thank you, Jesus, for that little clap over there. Individual thought process that went through your mind. It was beautiful when it came out like this. <clears throat> okay, continuing. Continuing. As a result, people brought the oh, listen to this one. People brought the sick into the streets and they laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on, the, on some uh, of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. Hmm, watch this now. The people, what people don't realize when you just read that, is because of the culture and that time frame, the people, they came to believe that there was something magical about Peter and his shadow. They literally started thinking there was something about Peter's shadow. So they were bringing people to just sit in the shadow, just like the monkeys. If the one monkey got squirted with water, they were telling the other monkeys about the water, but the monkeys that were just hearing about it didn't experience it. So they were hearing about Peter, and they were thinking one person got healed in the shadow. Next thing you know, there's a line of people waiting to, for the shadow to fall on them. And, and that's, where, that's where we sit there, and we, we have to understand, well, what was wrong with that? Well, let, let me just keep... Let me just keep Finishing my thought process here. So there were a number of places in the New Testament, including the book of Acts, where God healed people through surprising means, such as this. Such as this. Besides Peter's shadow, this includes the hem of Jesus' garment, the hem of his robe, the, he, peop, uh, the, the, the lady with the issue of blood was healed, and the, the face cloth and the aprons that the apostle Paul had prayed over and sent out, people were healed when they laid them on them. There was nothing special about these items. Rather, it was the power of God working through the messenger Are you with me here? So this is all who are faithful and committed become these messengers. But you say, Joe, I don't understand what's wrong. Okay, okay, I must stop here. I must explain this to you. The shadow, why did God allow the shadow to be healed if they thought there was something magic in the shadow? Why did they allow the face cloth to to heal somebody if if the people were going to start believing in face cloths and in the hem of Jesus' garment? You have to understand, the person that God worked through, hold on to this now, especially if you're in ministry, the person that God worked through never stopped preaching the truth. So the shadow miracle and the cloth miracle was overtaken by the word of God. Therefore, it came into balance. At some point, it wasn't the shadow. It was he that was in us that did that, and he's available for you as well. 
The problem we have in many times all throughout history is when a miracle takes place, we forget the gospel and we focus on the miracles and the crowd starts looking at the, at the miracles through us and not through he that is working through us. That's real dangerous, church. That's why the word of God is so important because otherwise you'll never get the bananas to the top of the tree because everyone will have talked you out of it. When you understand the word, when you take time to read the passion of this beautiful, precious word of God, you will begin to understand that God is going to work through you in ways that you can't even imagine. Supernatural doesn't have a limitation. But if you forget the gospel, then what God's doing through you will become dangerous for people and you if you do not tell the people where it's coming from. And you have to express these things. You have to teach the word to the people. You can't just go, you can't just go, you know, hand slapping people and expect, you know, a huge crowd to show up and then go, well, I forgot to tell them who did that. Come on, because remember, the supernatural draws people. But lights draw bugs too. So you got to remember, some light draws the bugs and some zap them. You got to be, you got to let the people know who's who and what's what. So God will bless you, you and me, any way he chooses, but we must always know it's him and not cloths and shadows are people. You watch, church, what God's going to do through you. You just watch, but you don't know when. You don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know how it's going to happen. You just know it's going to happen as long as your passion is not to see a miracle, but to see Jesus. That's when he says, you're ready. Come on, man. Did you get a hold of that? I, 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 just, I, I love slides today. I'm a slide crazy man. This is the last one, by the way, but here's another one. So based on what I just talked about, we're still talking about stand and don't run. Don't forget that. But we're taking little, little, little uh, loops to get there. We're now I'm, I'm finishing the thought process on the shadow being healed and understanding the importance of the word and understanding the importance of us not forgetting who the miracle worker is. So we need, you and me, this is a slide. <clears throat> here it is. We need to focus on on, what we need to focus on here is the passion the apostles had regarding the revelation of Jesus is and how the fire of God continues to reveal this to them. We today should never focus on everyone being healed, but on how we can submit to the Lord to let his amazing fire continue to refine us. And the miraculous will come when we are ready to handle what comes afterwards. Whew, that's powerful, man, right there. I, all I can tell you is that's powerful. And being in ministry for 27 years and traveling in different parts of the globe, I've seen people not know what to do after their healing. Jesus even said, stop sinning or it'll come back worse. So there's, there's, a, there's so much that God's like, no, 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 I don't want you to just give them a piece of the cross. I need you to give them all the cross. I need you to help them understand who I am, what I did, why I did it, the power that flows through me, and what we should simply do during that time, which is not focus on a supernatural explosion of the Holy Spirit to, to fall upon the people, but a supernatural desire of him to yearn within us so that we can be all we can be. And from that comes a, comes a glory that none of us have seen yet. The church has not seen the full glory of God and it won't see the full glory of God until its passion lies fully on the glory of his word. <clears throat> That's what we desire right here. Because remember this, this doesn't need help. It doesn't need help. You don't even need, let me teach you how to pray for the sick. You don't need help. You don't need to learn how to pray for the sick. Let me teach you how to lay hands on that. You don't need help doing that. But yeah, I gotta teach you how to, no, you don't need help doing that. The Bible will tell you how to do it. It's right here. It'll happen. You'll walk up. I remember the happening to me the first time. I had no idea what to do. No idea what to do. And, and there were 50 children lined up here like this. And I sat there looking at all of them. And I go, what am I going to do? And God spoke to me. He says, lay hands on them. I said, what do you mean lay hands on them? He says, just touch them and pray for them. To a, just touch, a point of contact. Touch them. Pray for them. I didn't know what happened, but it looked like dominoes. I'm like, what just happened? So see, you don't have to be taught. You just have to desire he that is the teacher. And I am not that teacher. He is. Come on, are you with me? Those people watching online, yearn for his word and he'll take care of the rest. Mm. Yeah, I should have dropped a mic or something, huh? Man, that was, that wasn't me. That was the Lord. Verse 17, let me finish this up. Then 
This is where it gets good. You ready for this? You ready for this? What is the fire part four? What is the fire? What is the fire of God? I just told you what the fire does, but now I'm gonna show you something else it does just personally for you. This is where you get blessed right here. You may not, God may not work a miracle through you today. He may not work a miracle through you tomorrow or next year. He doesn't, we don't know when it's gonna happen, but his glory is upon you regardless because his word is in you. So let's, let's take verse, starting with verse 17 and say, this is for me, this is for you, this is for us as a church, as an individual. So let's keep listening. Watch this now. Especially, someone out here is gonna rock when I say this because you're about to do what God doesn't want you to do. So listen, here we go. <clears throat> then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. (laughs) Oh, religious leaders, they're so full of jealousy. Um, This testifies to their failure to spiritually lead people. Government can't lead people. They don't have Jesus in them. They're, they're, They're in it for themselves. You understand? I'm not picking on government today. I'm just trying to tell you the difference between God's kingdom and man's kingdom. That's why the apostles didn't understand. Nobody understand Jesus was for that kingdom, not this one. Because this one is for themselves. This one is for you. Keep listening. Here we go. Ready? So they couldn't lead. The Sadducees, who were supposed to be the, the high priests, they couldn't lead people to the Messiah because they were too busy trying to lead people to themselves. So now we have to understand that. So they arrested the apostles because they're jealous of them and they put them in a public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. What new life? The resurrection of Jesus. Go tell them about it. Now, now, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This every single person who calls themselves a Christian, even people who don't call themselves a Christian, when this kind of challenge comes your way, and this is a, this is a pretty awesome challenge because if you can understand this one being overcome you can understand all your little challenges especially somebody comes against you something happens in your life something happens at your job something happens in your relationship with your friends things happen church things happen and the first thing that people do that are not christians is they they redirect so that the thing that happened doesn't happen again Amen? And they get themselves, so what's wrong with that? Well, nothing if it's in relationship and you keep choosing bad mar- relationships. Don't, don't do that anymore. But I'm saying you run from where God has you because you can't see past the circumstance right now. Newsflash, no one can see tomorrow but him. Where you're going, he has been. Amen. He went to the end of time, came back to the beginning of time, wrote us in and said, it is finished. So now you have to understand they were thrown in jail in the middle of the night. The angel comes, opens the doors miraculously, didn't wake the guards. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. But the norm here, the, the, the people without the fire of God, the Peter without the fire of God, John without the fire of God, the norm for them would have been right there is to flee Jerusalem and get out because they're serious. The Sadducees, the high priest, they are serious. They are putting serious threats on these men. Get out of town. But Jesus says, go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people about me. You can't do that when there's no fire. Where's the fire start? You know how you, you, know how you flick the thing on the lighter? What's that, that, that metal thing? It just, and, and there's a flint. That's just the spark. The fuel is what's in the tank below. That's what keeps the flame burning. But I wish I had a lighter. I was going to bring one today. But when you flick it, you got to hold your thumb down on the lighter. If you let go, the flame goes out, right? Same thing with the Word of God. Once, once you open this thing, once you, now you got to keep it open. You have to keep this open. This is what makes the fire flow. Hmm, I hope I created a visual in your head because I didn't bring a lighter. So they were they should have just fleed. It's human nature to flee when trouble comes. That's what humans do. They flee. They don't stand, they flee. Church people are more guilty of that than anybody. They flee. They should know better, but they flee. Why do we flee? Because we're scared. Why are we scared? Because we're reading, we're watching YouTube instead of watching the Word of God. We're watching TV instead of the Word of God. We're listening to complainers on YouTube and and Facebook and Instagram instead of the Word of God. We're watching TikTok videos instead of the Word of God. We're entertaining our mind instead of teaching our mind. We've gotten out of that church. 
So we want to flee because that's what human nature is, to flee. But it is God's nature to trust and stand. If you read this book, he says stand. If you listen to the world, they say run. If you don't like what someone's saying, cancel it. And leave. And run from them. And don't hang out with them anymore. And the Lord says, I put you there. Stand. Go back to the place they're destroying you and stand. Go back where you failed and stand. Go back where you were convicted and stand. But don't just stand in your nature. He says, tell the people about me. Don't tell them about you. And don't give them your opinion. Give them his truth. Because this is what sets you free. This is what protects you. Did you get that? Somebody out there right now is going, well, I'm feeling God's telling, God ain't telling you nothing. God doesn't tell you what he wants you to do. He just moves you. Did you hear that? God doesn't alert you. He doesn't alert you. When they were in a, in a trance and they were like, go preach tomorrow. I let you out of jail. He, can you imagine? Can you imagine this? You don't know if you're going to get killed tomorrow. You're in jail. You're, they want to give him death. They, they wanted to. They were so jealous. They wanted, they wanted to put him to death, right? Didn't that, and it's going to say that a little bit lower here. But they're sitting in this prison, guys, and they're talking to each other going, what's going to happen to us? And we don't know, but we don't care. We don't care. What are we going to do? Nothing. We don't know what to do. We're in prison right now. So they're sitting there. Next thing you know, the guards are out there. They know they're not going to fall asleep because it could be their heads. Next thing you know, somehow, quietly, the gate opens. And as the gate opens, what would you do? You'd be like, hello? Anybody out there? Guards are staring, but like the, they can't see you. They didn't hear the gate open. Then all of a sudden, an angel appears before you and says, now go stand in the middle of where they convicted you and keep talking about me. When did they get their orders? When they needed them. They didn't pray at home in their jail, in their fear. Because if they were praying like you and me pray, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the fire of God. They, were, they walked with the word, lived with the word, and then received the fire. So they knew how to understand the voice of God. But if many Christians were sitting in that cell, they'd be like, you know what? Let's pray. Let's just pray. Father, release us from this prison right now. Release us from this. Not your will be done, but our will be done. Release us from this prison right now because we know, we know. Yeah, yeah. Are you getting this? Because I'm getting this. I'm getting this. Are you getting it? I'm getting it. Yes. What are you getting? I'm getting that when we get out of here, we need to go to Judea because that's where God wants us because it's too painful here. God says, uh-uh. That's not how it works. You want to know if you have the fire of God? You don't run. But I think I feel, you don't feel it. Trust me. God, I know this God. You know this God. It's in the word of God. Read the word. He never sends a telegram telling you what to do. He shocks you right that moment. Get up and go. You, don't, you have to make the decision right there. Hey, Matthew. Hey, how you doing today? Come follow me. The sons of Zebedee, Peter, they're in the boat. They're fishing. Hey, come follow me. Hey, Pops, sell the boat. See what you can get with it. I'm out of here. That moment, that moment it happens. That moment. But no matter what, when the moment comes, he expects you to grow in his word. And when you grow in his word, what comes next is a planted feet in concrete of this word. Stand on the word. Don't run from it. It's not going to be, you know, I really was excited about this message, but the more, I, the more I hear myself talking, I keep thinking people have to go, but I didn't want to hear that today. I want a way out. There is no way out. He's the way out. But their only way out is through him. And he's not going to detour you so you're comfortable. Did that make any sense? Someone out there is your ministry, your life, your family, your children. Things are going to be saved in 20 years from now because if you hear this and abide by this, you will stand and not run. Oh, Jesus, please do take over where I left off. So without the fire of God, it is, this is absolutely impossible, church, without the fire of God. Human effort 
ends here and the boldness and the Holy Spirit engages right at your moment right there. Just don't talk to yourself. Don't talk yourself into the voice you just heard as being God's when it was really just yours. That's where the problems begin. Anyway, so at daybreak, at daybreak, they, uh, they entered the temple courts and they had been told, uh, uh, hold on, they, they entered the, sorry, at daybreak they entered the temple courts as they had been told by the Holy Spirit and began to teach the people. When the high priests and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders. of Everyone was there. The big boys were there. Like, we ain't, we're holding court right now. And, and sent to the jails uh, for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, we found the jail securely locked with the guard standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. So the doors were relocked again. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the high priest were, were at a loss, wondering what this might lead to. Right here at this point, they are always worried about their own reputation, their own truth. Doesn't that sound like people today? We're just worried about us. Ignore the miracle so we can prove our point. But here's what you got to hold on to in this little segment right here at church. The Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel. When God can trust you to stand, he brings the audience that needs to hear it. Come on. Not going on any further on that. Let the Holy Spirit fix that one. Where was I? So, in somewhat conclusion here, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not one of these people I'm closing right now. I don't know when. I've, I've just got a scripture to read, so let's see how fast I can get through this. Verse 25 says, Then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail, they're standing in the temple court teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. Trust me, when God tells you to do something, he brings his own security. He doesn't need your, your help, right? So the apostles were brought in and made it to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in his name, he said, yet you filled Jerusalem with the teachings and determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. It's all about them. It's all about them. Don't make your life all about you. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. Do you see how, how ignorant they sound? You're, you're making us look bad. Peter's like, I, I wasn't saying anything bad. I was speaking truth. Remember, as I talked last week, he's speaking out of passion. He wants Jesus for everybody now because he figured out who he was. That's what the fire does. Brings revelation to who you are, then revelation to who he is. Without him, and then boldness, and then fire. Come on, man, are you with me? Standing, we're standing right here. Peter said, and Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. So where was this Peter, church? Where was this Peter when they questioned if he, if he knew Jesus? Oh, he ran, that's right. Oh yeah, he ran. Why did he run? Because he was void. Oh. Why do we run? Why do we hear a voice that's not God and listen to it and obey it? Why do we run when we're challenged? Why do we run when we can't see the circumstance? Because we are void of revelation, knowledge of the word and boldness because, we, because Peter, like us, were void of the Holy Spirit. You think that the Holy Spirit comes with a worship song and a tickle. It doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit comes when you read the Word of God and let them reveal the Word of God and then there's a knowledge and understanding of who the Word of God is in and through you and you look at the world through the... You can't see past the Scriptures, church. You don't need to know what man's circumstances are because God has an agenda that can't be overridden. But we can't understand that because as, as you're seeing here, it's just all about them. It's not about the desire and the passion of his true word right here. Void of the Holy Spirit is void of freedom. It's void of faith. It brings fear. Amen? Keep listening. The God of our ancestors, Peter's saying, raised Jesus from the dead whom you killed by hanging him on the cross and God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. What he's trying to say here is the same Jesus that loves us loves you. I'm not criticizing you. I'm not coming against you. But the truth hurts. When I know, when I want to deposition you from your own, when I, when I, meaning God, wants to dethrone you from your own fleshly throne and put you next to his, it's going to hurt. 
because you don't want to give up who you are. Come on, man, are you getting this? We'll run, let's run. I, I came to a church, they didn't let me do what I wanted to do, it's time to leave. No, you're gonna leave and go to another church, go to another church, and you're gonna infect everybody that comes along when you literally think you're the antidote, you're the infection. Hold on to these thoughts, man, because it's like this in our life. Let's, let's not talk about church, let's, let's bring it home. When you keep running from your marriage, you're trying to find Mr. or Mrs. Right, you're the, you're the infection, you're not the antidote. Every marriage you get into, you will ruin because it's about you. Come on, are you with me? Jesus says, love your wife like Christ. Uh, Paul the Apostle said, love your wife like Christ loved the church. That's, oh, that's tough. That's tough. Be careful. So anyway, where was I? So we, he's saying here, we are witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Spirit though, to those who obey him. So see the difference between, see the difference here? Come on, let's just wrap it up like this. The difference between um, Peter with the Holy Spirit and Peter without the Holy Spirit. So Peter without is always worried about his reputation and his outcome and what others will think about him. But Peter with the Holy Spirit is now focused and trusting in the Lord and the fear of man is gone and the peace of God is upon him. When you have the Holy Spirit in you, it's not about you. You're not worried about what man thinks about you. You're not worried because you're doing, you're, you're, if Christ in you is love, he's not violence. When you judge people based on the word of God, you're not bringing Jesus to them. That's why the world hates Christians. Church people, they're not church people. The, the, the public arena doesn't like the name Jesus because it comes associated with crazy people, it comes associated with judgmental people. But he's so full of love that if the true Jesus was in any of us, people would want to know him. They wouldn't watch from the outside anymore. We have to not put our personal anger in his gospel. Anyway. Obey means to do what Jesus said, literally, church. Never to look at the Holy Spirit as a prostitute, meaning we can do anything we want with him. Don't, don't do that. Don't look, as the whole, look at the Holy Spirit as an opportunity for your personal growth. He, that should never be on your mind. Well, I'm a new Christian. I don't understand any of this. I'm sorry. We failed you. But I fused the water this gospel down. Because if what I'm saying is over your head right now, he'll make you understand it. It can't be over your head because it's not over my head and my head don't go very high. <laughs> verse 33 in its final verse, it says, when they heard this, they were furious. They, when the, when the, 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 the assembly of priests and stuff, they were furious and they wanted to put them to death. Wow. Wow. Mm. Did they die at that moment? No. So here's, this, here's my final slide for you. Truth brings anger and offense. At this point, we need to remember this is not a battle that we need to engage in. Mm. I don't know if I need to explain that. I hope God will tell you. It, the battle's not yours, it's God's. So if you don't like what's inside the package, don't shoot the mailman. Amen. There's people right now that may have been watching this sermon that as soon as I started talking, they had it in their mind that they didn't want to change and shut it off. There's people right, maybe in this room that as soon as I started teaching, didn't want to hear what I had to say, so got on your phone to ignore it. I don't know, because the truth will truly bring anger in yourself and offense. You'll get offended by the truth. But I'm not offending you. He's offending you. And if he's offending you, that means he wants to bring you out of offense. And he wants to bring you out of anger. It's when we engage our own personality in the truth that man can't get to the truth because they can't get past us. Does that make sense? So in conclusion, um, there are so many of us. Can you stand up with me? Worship team, can you come back up here, please? If you're at home right now, don't shut this down just yet, please. Just stretch a little bit, but don't talk to the person next to you just yet. There, I'm gonna speak to somebody out here right now, so I want you to hear this. There's somebody, but I'm saying there's many, but I'm sure there's just somebody 
who God is just waiting to stand. He's waiting for you to take a stand. But you're making plans to run right now. You've convinced yourself that what you're about to do, God's in this. There might be somebody out here listening right now who's not a Christian and you don't understand why you want to run. That's just natural. If, you, if you're not a Christian and you feel like you're trying to always escape life, you need to get into the word because God doesn't want you to escape life. He wants to pull you through it. And that's what Jesus is all about. Jesus is not about a mean judge. He's literally about coming in and walking beside you, taking you by the hand and saying, I will get you through this. I loved you enough to die on the cross for you. Now I'm gonna get you through this. All I ask from you is to be all in committed to me. The word love means covenant, commitment, and communion. All I want you to do is be in covenant with me. That means no other God. Relinquish all your other gods. Everything. I I always want to interject, but I never do because I don't feel like I can at this point. But when I'm on Facebook and people are sick and they said, can you just send prayers and positive thoughts? You're never going to get a positive thought from me because I'll give you a positive thought. All It's not going to do anything for you. But I'm going to send prayer. God, I need all of you. I don't need you to worship positive thoughts. I don't need you to worship idols. I don't need you to worship false gods that are dead in graves right now. I need you to worship me, the worship of the risen God. The only tomb that's empty. The only God who was seen by more than 500 people after these people watched him die on the cross. They watched him take his last breath. They watched him mangle. Only that God is the one you're to worship. This is what being born again is, being committed to just Him. You say, well, I want to find, there's many ways to God. No, there's one way. There's just one. His name's Jesus. He is Savior and God. You say, I don't know about that. Yeah, I know, because we messed up. I don't blame anybody but the church. I'm on a pulpit. If I do something wrong, tell me. If If I'm not helping you understand something, tell me. I, like Peter, do not want to come across arrogant to the people. I want to come across with passion. I want everybody to love Jesus. But it is not my anxiety that you do or don't. It's just my passion to want to tell you. I love finding this information out and sharing it with you. I just adore it, church. I love it because somewhere, somehow, the Holy Spirit is going to touch you. And you're going to go, oh, that's me. And that God will save me? Yes, he will. But how is God going to fix me? In the church, those of you here today, those watching online, my friends in, in other states that are watching right now, Hugh up in where his mom is and somewhere high above California, Washington maybe. I forgot what you told me she lived. And people are just sitting there going, When is it going to happen for me? Stand. How can God grow a fruit on your tree if you keep pulling the roots up? Because you feel you know where better soil is. Stand. I can't do it, Joe. Me neither. But if you want to understand the fire of God, if I say the fire of God is going to, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna call down fire from heaven. I'm not saying you're going to have a good time. I'm saying the rubber's about to meet the road. You're going to be dismantled and put back together again. If I explained that to you and said that tonight we're going to come back and worship and his, I pray his fire just fall on everybody. If I made you truly understand that, you know how many of you would be watching reruns of Friends tonight? I'm not going there. I'm not letting them clean me up. I want to go where I'm going to feel good. That's not God. Never anywhere in the New Testament did God say, follow me and you'll feel good. But I'll get you to where no one else can get you, including yourself. I'll get you to eternal glory. If you don't know this Jesus, don't worry about the rejection 
and don't worry about the pain and don't worry about the sorrow in your life. Just get to Jesus and he's going to work you through it. He's not going to remove you from it. He's going to show you that he's more powerful than that which comes against you. And he's going to walk you right past it, just like Peter and John walked right past the guards. Amen? Now, we got some business to take care of in the sanctuary here, so we'll see you Tuesday night. Bye-bye. We love you.